Good morning everybody Good morning everybody just in case that's a bit slow uh, This video is about religion uh, But also I want you to know that I'm really excited And that Sh Shania Twain about my 7th or 8th or maybe 9th or 10th true love in the media and pop singing sector is getting divorced and she might be available in Las Vegas <laughs> I don't know what the rental costs will be eh, but she has no heroes and this woman is a romantic French person and we've heard all about the religious connotations to all of the romantic stories out of France I'm gonna get more explicit <laughs> okay passionate song that speaks about loving someone so much that you are prepared to give up everything on earth for that person's loving return. I guess many of us know that feeling. It's called Pour que tu mon cœur. So, <laughs> the sacrifices of the French in love and religion. Do you see the little guy with his legs akimbo? <laughs> I now believe that I might win Shania Twain's heart because she sings about not having any heroes and not having anybody that impresses her very much. <laughs> okay, her links to Mark Twain <laughs> uh, and the f ending of my favourite movie uh, make me feel really potent this morning because I now understand the legs akimbo joke let me explain it to you <laughs> did you see the little guy in the white suit yeah the one true love with all his sexual apparatus on display yeah legs akimbo and the cross gender jokes that they use even in the Rothschild family and in the navies that sink the ships all around the world are now obvious to me because of this <laughs> let's get out of YouTube for fear of copyright infringement there we are the legs akimbo and a massive shaft right up the port of entry that is the grapevine joke in Christianity yeah <laughs> can you see it the grapevine cross at Tbilisi <laughs> where Celtic used to play before they got their corrupted director numbers okay right then let me resort to religion and to try and impress Shania Twain in the Calpurnius uniform <laughs> with Mozart's hat box okay the grapevine cross Georgian do you know where Georgia is and Tbilisi is it's in Armenia where the genocide was where I keep talking about and they keep referring us back to sexual acts and the shape of the grapevine Christian cross okay can you see it the limbs come forward and everything between them is openly on display and you get shafted by it like the 32,000 virgins if you're fighting for the right side in numbers in the Old Testament it is really gonna focus on religion and we're into Holy Week okay <laughs> we're right into the ultimate sacrifice for our greatest martyr uh, this is the Jewish Saturday <laughs> in the confused timelines about the resurrection of our greatest uh, dead <laughs> yeah our greatest dead person okay and if you cannot find it, I want you to look up those sen sen search terms. If I don't have time to complete the story, so I've explained the grapevine joke in part. That's Saint Nino, the most famous name all over Armenia where the genocide occurred. <laughs> and if you watch uh, the film about, let me see what.
If you watch the film Secrets and Lies, where the man in the restaurant from the Of Wiedersehen pet team, who subsequently, because he makes the film Secrets and Lies, which is about rubbing chocolate on a bare naked bulimic woman's tits, and him, <laughs> him sexually attacking an Armenian woman in his restaurant, I forget the name of the actor, but he's typical of the working man all over the world now. Uh, he used to be Barry in Of Wiedersehen pet, and his name is Timothy Spall. He got a horrible leukemia for making that movie. You should watch it. It's very explicit about caravans of death and genocides in other people's countries. And all of the men that were in it are working men. <laughs> okay? Uh, and the of Wiedersehen pet about slave labour tax-free in Germany is a sad indictment of the world that we now live in because everybody's involved in a scam <laughs> and many of them are dead already <laughs> uh, Pat Roach the Bristolian wrestler was one of the first to go uh, and the Cockney that was in it <laughs> Gary Holton is also a goner okay uh, and the likely lads and the jokes about Thelema <laughs> are really really evil too but I digress let's get back to the published evidence and the things that I want you to look up on uh, Wikipedia so Pantalon Saint Pantalon Saint Barbara that Ali G warned us about Barbara Bush is a much more feared person than George W or or uh, the previous uh, Poppy Bush <laughs> yeah they're all involved in the religious jokes. The next thing is Kivan and Ruska Kivan. As you know from my videos, Kivan is the last place where paganism survived right up until the year 800 AD or thereabouts because we cannot know anything accurately. <laughs> all of these saints are alleged to be saints but every one of the Wikipedia entries is that the historians have given up on them and only the church listings continue to use them. Then you've got the links to Peru and the Norse legends and I will give you the North legends. It's kind of like a love story. Yeah, you've got a goodie who's a Peron <laughs> and you've got a baddie, I forget the name of that, but you will see, that's the Perons that brutalised Argentina before Mrs Thatcher did. <laughs> uh, and the working class Geordie in that film wore crocodile shoes, sang about them, and his name was... can't remember. He's world famous in the Of Wiedersehen cast as being the outspoken one. With the vest, like Rab seen is, but the vestarium joke. <laughs> okay, right then. Uh, and then with the last one, I forget what that tab is, but let's keep going down and reveal the Grapevine Cross is a major symbol of the Georgian Orthodox Church and dates from the 4th century AD when Georgia was still pagan and when Christianity was now beginning to kill people in the name of its one true messianic <laughs> human, uh, which is totally faked up and all of the videos we've made on that are uncontestable evidence that the whole of the Easter week is a fraud. <laughs> okay, it's recognisable by this, uh, the, the legend has it that she received the grapevine. Uh, who's she? So the grapevine cross also known that is a major symbol of the Georgian and dates for the becoming the official religion of Iberia. It's Slight drooping, the slight drooping of its horizontal arms, which are actually legs <laughs> and vaginas, or cocks, which is also part of the Fox News joke and the Jesus being denied story. <laughs> Traditional accounts credit Saint Nino. That's El Nino, the weather pattern thuggish story again that captivates the whole world and generates the carbon tax which is going to be very soon a tax on breathing. So Nino preached Christianity in Iberia corresponding to Armenia where the genocide occurred okay with this unusual shape of the cross and the rest of the joke is obvious because legend has it that she received the grapevine posture from the Virgin Mary. <laughs> yeah. 
There is doubt about that story, even in the Monty Python team. Look at the window scene and the subsequent events and how they whisper that she may not be the virgin. That's the mum of the fake Jesus. Okay, Nino came with this cross on her mission to Georgia, where the genocide occurred for a laugh. <laughs> During the Persian in ah oh, merd. During the Persian invasions, do you know where Persia is? <laughs> yeah, that's where the otters are, and that is where Armageddon is. It's fucking Iraq. Sorry, I must not swear because that's blasphemy. <laughs> During the Persian invasions, it was taken, this cross, the very precious one-off cross, like the Holy Grail on every church roof around the world, was taken to Armenia and still stayed there until David, <laughs> you know the man that killed Goliath, that occurred in a region very near Nazareth, which is also a joke, but I've not had time to explain it, okay? Georgia recovered from the Armenian city of Aini from the Muslims in 1124. So with the saint was originated in the 3rd century and we're already into the period past the invasions of the Holy Land by all of the Gentile nations. And that's the Muslims. <laughs> okay? They took the crush to Mount Shketa. King Vatang III of Georgia enshrined the cross in a special envelope decorated with the scenes from St. Nino's life and that's the launch of the new postal system. When you get a new stamp you make money from the uh, special envelope. Do you remember that concept before the post office was privatised last year for the second time? <laughs> by Vince Cable, who's stealing from British students as the head of the DTI. Earlier genocides for oil and wealth. Uh, so, and what we've got in there is a reference to securing the cross with her own hair. Do you get it? The hair around the vagina is called the lettuce, and that is the hairy pie Piso joke again. <laughs> yeah? And the jokes about the vagina and the feet in the Italian translations are absolutely vicious. And in the pictures that come with that, those jokes are also laughed at. Okay? Earlier genocides for oil wealth. Stories. Okay? So that's the oil wealth on the Russian steps that I keep telling you about as I get slightly away from the major themes. Okay, so that's Wikipedia Grapevine Cross. Let's have a wee look at what Saint Nino does. Do you now get the gravity of the global warming scam? Launched by a Klein who comes into this story later on and paid to do the story on global warming by the authorities in America that made her a millionaire for her book on the red zones and the crashing of Iraq and all of the revelations about demonized countries that have been brutalized and two million people were killed in. Eh? But that's historic and what she has to do with the green issues is to cover something up because it's one of the biggest frauds that ever occurred in our world the invention of the fictitious Jesus by the Piso family <laughs> and the Piso family, there she is with the cross okay, let's just work our way through this so there she is, she's not the little baby Jesus that we've already explained to you that was used to get the citizens gold in the South Pacific as they brutalized the whole of the South Pacific with Magellan's fleet, the three, the three ships that go sailing by on Christmas Day in the morning. She looks a bit like uh, the woman Cameron, who's a relative of Nell Gwynne. That's the Prime Minister's woman with her legs akimbo, but unfortunately her messianic son does not survive beyond the age of 10 for reasons already discussed and his pre their preparedness to run frauds of this magnitude and steal from their people. Okay, 
she's female and she was born in Colossae which is a joke about the <laughs> about the Lamb of God and the colostrum that you get from the birth of the Lamb or of the child okay Armenian Roots in the Caravan Restaurant Chocolate on the Tits Sector that is the film that I've just referred you to it involving the Off Wiedersehen pet cast keep forgetting the name of it it's made by a Londoner who makes many sinister films many of them including this one the woman the man that went to school with my wife <laughs> who is now in divorce proceedings and might make room for Shania Twain yet yeah, uh, he was in the film Secrets and Lies and it is really really explicit which is why Timothy Spall got the cancer <laughs> okay uh, and Kevin Whateley is in it and the key van story about the last bastion uh, for paganism is also part of the joke okay Christopher that's Christ Ofer Fairbank <laughs> yeah everything they think it's really funny and these are the ordinary working men of Newcastle or Sunderland that's a really touchy subject if I get that wrong I may not live to see next week <laughs> right uh, so back to the story about El Nino the woman yeah it's not the baby Jesus in this one and that comes into their stories all of the time they keep making director numbers with a man's name and a woman's name in the middle of the string it's part of the deviancy and ID frauds that occur in their massive business and economic frauds all over the world okay uh, I forget the name of my wife's school chum that was in that movie but have a look at the cast uh, and he's the one that licked the chocolate of the bulimic woman's tits <laughs> okay they are really really humorous until they contract the cancers ah shit so where are we oh the nana jokes in all of the musicians casts are explained and there's the woman the woman with the cross with the legs akimbo and can you see the non-erect serpent <laughs> wrapping its way round the pole <laughs> the pole dancer joke do you now see what it is about <laughs> the whole thing is a parody and that's Sant Nino in Iberia with her scroll <laughs> and her grapevine cross right then let's try and keep to the script Queen Nana who suffered from a se so this is in Cappadocia which is Julius Caesar Caesar's elite estate on the shores of the Black Sea where the uh, the uh, people that don't pay their tax the Amazons live <laughs> Yeah, and the pharmacies. I'm a fellow of the pharmaceutical society, and pharmacies is in this very region. So every time you hear Lily Allen making a joke about na 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 na, it's Queen Nana who suffered from a severe illness, like the actor in the movie that shagged the woman from Armenia in his new restaurant and drank all the wine himself. <laughs> Okay, he had some knowledge of Christianity but had not yet converted to it. Nino, Nino restoring the Queen's health won to herself disciples from the Queen's attendants, including a Jewish priest and his daughter. That could have been Bill Gamaliel, but I have no evidence for that. <laughs> That's Sir Bill G Gamaliel of the virtual oil and gas frauds called Cairn with their CEO on the... Uh, core of the Bank of England with Dave Prentice. In 334, <laughs> Miriam commissioned, that's Miriam, <laughs> this time it's like Marianne, the Robin Hood joke, not like Miriam, the joke about the parentage through the Piso family of one of the Emperor's children. <laughs> that's in the Rome and the Roman Church and the people who wrote the stories. Okay, she lives in a sve tits covel hovel <laughs> cathedral yeah so that's the Mirian joke sve swedish tits hovel cathedral 
Do you get that one? <laughs> no pole dancing referred to. Nino having witnessed the conversion of Iberia to Christianity withdrew to the mountain pass in Bodka. That's like the jokes made by the Carry On film team in the Khyber Pass. Carry on right up the Khyber with your legs akimbo. Any port of entry is justified in this joke. Nino and its variant remains the most popular name for women and girls in the brutalised Republic of Armenia. It actually keeps saying Georgia so that they can try and confuse the worshippers with the cover-up story. Okay, there are currently 80, 88,000 people. That's the continuous process keep relaying the joke to them joke that is the letter 8 which is why the Formula 1 race tracks take the form all over the world of the letter 8 ok 88,000 women over age 16 by that name residing in the country and see the Ali G joke about going back to Kazakhstan and meeting his relatives his multiple wives his sister who he shags as a laugh about these jokes and the uh, wives that are really worth paying for <laughs> like Mrs Snowy Cameron <laughs> the Nell Gwynn woman who's part of the orange sectarian joke okay and these are very long-standing stories okay <laughs> uh, and it's so it's a very popular name for people who are <laughs> part of the Republic of Georgia and where it was Jewish and all of the people get culled by the Christians for the name Winston Churchill like the Anzac War dead it is really not funny when you understand it deeply the Georgian name Nino is Nun Nani in Armenian thus Saint Nino is known as Saint Nun in Armenia her history as the only one of the 35 nun nuns of the company of St. Gayan and Hripshim, Hipsim, that's the hips don't lie joke shared by St. Shakira, yeah, one of the six Jewish angels that we've exposed, okay? <laughs> Shakina, that's Shakira. <laughs> the slaughter at the hands of the pagan Armenian king Tyra Dates. That's why we get dates on Christmas Day. It's all part of the same joke about genocides in other people's country throughout world's history. The history of the Armenians by Moses Korenzi. Moses of Koran. That's the Koran joke which was written about the year 440. The sacred monastery of St. Nina is the home of a monastic community of Orthodox Christian nuns in the Patriarch of Georgia. It's located in Union Bridge, Maryland, <laughs> right next door to Gettysburg. <laughs> Do you remember that story about freeing the people? That's Orthodox Christian nuns in the Patriarchate of Georgia. It is located in Union Bridge, Maryland, USA. I cannot tell you without tears coming to my eyes how many people died at Gettysburg in the name of this joke okay and that's where Mrs Simpson came from <laughs> right next door to Gettysburg and they are freely talking about genocides that occurred in the year 440 next one the pantaloons joke Okay, so the legs are akimbo with nothing to cover the lettuce and the fruits, yeah, and the tree of life story just keeps coming into these stories. This is the pink panther, the black panzer tanks, and the pantalons story, <laughs> yeah, you can smell the stench from the crotch. Okay, <laughs> and the churches and the architects are ever so creative. <laughs> like the Geordies that work in Germany and don't pay any tax. Okay, this one looks like the poof that was chucked out the window by Longshanks, and he keeps walking past my window. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> okay, Sant 
Pantaleon. So that's the Lion of Judah and the Pants joke all into one. Yeah, all of them have ephods and little boxes of presents from the one true God or merchandise that they're able to buy from the uh, money stream that results. That's the Easter egg concept that everybody engages in this week. I slept in last night and I missed all of the religious services, but I understand entirely that God was getting me ready to make an exposure. <laughs> yeah, that's not the messianic gods. But the stories that are so twisted about the Norse gods and the names of our days and everything that they invert, it is absolutely brutal. But that will be in video two, because it's right down here near the bottom. <laughs> But this is, that's the most shocking part of all, what happened to the Kivans and how they invert the stories about the gods that were worshipped even in Egypt, then in Norway, and then become the basis for the piper of who took the rats out of his town. That's the Aryan myths that takes Germany to war again and again and again. The writing of that was partially done by the man who had the same name as the British Prime Minister when World War I broke out. That's Chamberlain. Yeah, the writer of the precipitants for all of that war was Stuart Houston Chamberlain who got the Iron Cross in Germany. Okay, the elite writers are always culprits and that's why my wife was a fan of Enid Blyton and Enid Blyton's innocent husband died in a uniform in his early twenties but she was able to continue it with her publishing empire near petty France where the Bank of England is owned from and is immune from bombing in World War II so Saint Pantalon including scenes from his life he's got lovely curly hair and could be a dame <laughs> yeah Monastery of St. Catherine on Mount Sinai. That's the English involvement, the name Catherine, in the Holy Lands, right next to the Jewish nation. Okay, great martyr and unmercenary healer. Nico, that's the Nick joke, and the Nick Clegg joke just keeps coming into the story. Venerated in Anglicanism. Eastern Orthodoxy, Oriental Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism. Pantaleon Monastery in the Jordan Desert. <laughs> Pantaleon Church built by Emperor Justinian <laughs> out of Rome in the 6th century. Constantinople, that's the Turkey on Christmas Day joke. <laughs> and that is sometimes called Christendom for a laugh. So they can launch the lethal inquests that was the Inquisition. <laughs> and that is part of the Sean Connery lifetime joke. Yeah, because he's part of it and it is really dangerous for him. That's why he got his heart attack. <laughs> uh, yeah, attributes a compartmented medicine box with a long handled spatula or spoon for stirring the shit. A martyr's cross, yeah, with the legs akimbo. <laughs> Physicians, midwives, livestock, lottery, lottery winners and victories, lottery tickets, invoked against headaches, consumption, locusts, remember the locust word, witchcraft, that's the pagans, the witches, endorsed entirely once they get the religion in place, accidents and loneliness, helper for crying children. And one can see the reason why the ch kid children never get a life. Okay? 14 holy helpers that's the list of saints I've only picked 3 from it so far it's going to take 2 movies to describe the horrible things that they have done to our world and it's indigenous people ok that could be the end of that story already ok but what is this ok this is legends according to martyrologies Pantalon was the son of a rich pagan Eustorgius yeah, and the Eustace jokes take us into Euston Station and St Eustace in France again. Okay, under the patronage, uh, so a, a renowned physician, like the local doctor who tried to get me sectioned. Yeah. <laughs> under the patronage of Euphrosinos, he became physician 
to the Emperor Maximian. It does not say Maximilian or Galerius. That's the Galerius from the Piso family who told you all about. And there's a laugh at the, the Laus story that we told you about Hadrian and the pub near Hexham where we used to live and all of the jokes about Christianity all around the wall region okay Christ was the better physician <laughs> okay exemplum of Pantaleon okay the plum story comes into the transition <laughs> and that's the purple vestments that the priests wear okay and Field McConnell operates out of Plum City and talks all the time to the pastor in the chat room but will not talk about fraud in the Rothschild director numbers that have cast Brian Gerrish from their community of investigative people uh, this very week. Okay, so there's the Mount Zion. Pantelon, however, confessed his faith and as proof that Christ is the true God, he healed a paralytic. Notwithstanding this, he was condemned to death by the emperor who regarded the miracle uh, of uh, healing the paralytic as an exhibition of magic. Uh, and being paralytic with the alcohol and the salty cheese is part of the story about women <laughs> who become the people that kill uh, in the New Zealand jokes. That is the the punch and judy story and the story about judith killing hollow fernies and that is a laugh at the all blacks expense and the south pacific gods okay <laughs> right then according to the later hagiography so a hag is someone who studies the witchcraft era when they were pagans pantaleon's flesh was first burned with torches whereupon christ appeared to all in the form of hermolaus to strengthen and heal Pantheon, Pantaleon. The torches were extinguished, then a bath of molten lead was prepared. When the apparition of Christ stepped into the cauldron with him, the fire went out and the, lead, the lead became cold. That could be a reference to our saintly emergency services. <laughs> okay, Pantaleon was now thrown into the sea, loaded with a great stone. That's the uh, anchor me now joke which floated and we, do you know what in the Scottish legends floats shit floats you may not have heard that term if you're posh and understand Latin in England <laughs> I entirely understand it shit floats he was thrown to wild beasts but these fawned up on him and could not be forced away until he had blessed them he was bound on the wheel but the rope snapped and the wheel broke that is the wagon wheel that is the spoke and staves model eh, spoke and, and wheel model that is all of the globalist fraud an attempt was made to behead him but the sword bent and the executioners were converted to Christianity written in 440 now there's a bit of doubt about the authenticity of the saints <laughs> Pantaleon implored heaven to forgive them. It was not until he himself desired that it was possible to behead him, upon which there issued forth blood and a white liquid like milk, which also comes into the legs of Kimbo's story and all of those movies that we've seen about uh, freedom in the New World Order music sector and Britney Spears pouring the milk on her boyfriend with the Mithraeum armour under his shirt <laughs> and that's Britney trying to get the news out for real okay white liquid like milk okay that could be the end of that story and it's all broken up okay and look at the churches they're beautiful uh, and that one is in Scopey like this a body double for the Skokie, Illinois joke about the Jewish war memorial and the Jewish festivals and the shrubberies that they get in America near Maryland, which is a joke about the Virgin and Gettysburg all at the same time. Okay, St. Pantaleon Monastery at Mount Athos, one of the three French musketeers and the 12th century church of St. Pantalimon the lemon is an icon in the four Jewish 
fruits joke which is a joke about the dimensions of your vagina and its penetration <laughs> not by the one true God but by your boyfriends okay <laughs> it is really really sad and that becomes the E.T. Etrog joke and a movie about a spaceman who invades Britain and joins a happy family in California which is CA which is a joke about Calvary Hill <laughs> okay and I hate to think about the Scottish tartans and the implications of the word Macedonia that's sorry that's Macedonia <laughs> okay because as you now know the donut the Celine Dion thing is a joke about Dionysius <laughs> okay the church of St. Pantelimon built in 1735 to 39 is in Russia where they keep culling people in the name of the anti-communist movement. Saint Vin Pantaleon is venerated with his hands nailed to his head. A nice story for the Hollywood makeups, okay, reflecting another legend about his death. After the Black Death of the mid-14th century in Western Europe, as a patron saint of physician and midwives, he came to be regarded as one of the 14 guardian martyrs. That is not the guardian, but they also do not tell any truths. <laughs> okay, relics of the saint are to be found at Saint Denis in Paris. His head is venerated at Lyon, where I lost all my belongings when I passed through it in an aeroplane. <laughs> okay uh, and everything that I do is not an accident and everything that I cover is revealed for me <laughs> deep in the night uh, and that's why I did not attend the services last night yeah I used to be an expert in sleep and the deployment of drugs I'm now totally ashamed of every statement I made and every paper I published <laughs> and I'm really God fearing now And maybe the working men in, in Newcastle who got the leukemias are also God-fearing. I believe that they've gotten much better and their movies are less sensational <laughs> and vicious to the innocent bystanders like the Armenian woman that was enslaved as the waitress in his restaurant. That's Sorry, if that wants to be respectable, we need to keep calling it Georgian because nobody can remember that far back in time. Okay, Ali G revealed for me that Barbara Bush was much more dangerous than uh, George W. Bush. Okay, and I did not understand that movie, uh, that statement, until I looked at the comic stories and the cartoon stories of Hannah Barbara, which cover up the whole of the Piso frauds. Okay, this one's a lot longer. We're halfway down now, the tabs are up there. Okay, and if anybody wants this, I can give you as a PDF free of charge. It is really sad that all of the churches that we're talking about steal from their people, and most Sundays they have two collections. <laughs> I've never been to a Jewish synagogue <laughs> yet, but I know all about the Jewish festivals and their vicious ties to the Christian festivals and the rotation of the dates, like at Easter. Okay, St. Barbara. Okay, so this is Ali G's hot tip about the really dangerous woman. And I thought it was a joke about Hannah Barbara's cover ups in the cartoon sector, but no. <laughs> there she is. She's got three windows in her massive tower. Can you see them? That is the Holy Trinity joke. Okay, and if you scan down, you will see that she is the saint of. <laughs> Let me scan down until you can see it on screen. Because I don't want to speculate. <laughs> yeah? I don't want to speculate. All of the jokes are totally obvious when you see the images and you read the plot line. Okay? <laughs> so, let's just take that across to there. So St. Barbara, with her attribute, three-windowed tower, central panel of St. Barbara altarpiece, <laughs> 1447 
National Museum in Warsaw where all those Jews were killed yeah that's Poland where all of the death camps were at the end of their yellow brick road and that guy's got green vestments as if he might be profiteering from the current day El Nino global warming scandal are you now beginning to see how they stitch us all up even the funeral is ultra expensive but I don't want to offend my neighbours because they're really decent people and they're prepared to sign my petition on the massive fraud that is my divorce and the disappearance from my house <laughs> and the dates for that are totally twisted but not nearly as much as the Christianity story okay and the subsequent cover-ups okay born mid third century died late third century to early fourth century executed by her father <laughs> yeah we're not allowed to smack our children and I never did with mine <laughs> okay variously given venerated in the Catholic Church Eastern Orthodox Church Oriental Orthodoxy Anglipayan Church and Anglicanism <laughs> many with subsidiaries in America near Maryland <laughs> the Virgin Territory <laughs> okay attributes three windowed tower palm chalice lightning a crown of martyrdom armorer patronage armorers architects artillery men firemen mathematicians miners and prisoners this woman is the high priestess <laughs> no sorry she's the saint of explosives yeah artillery men and miners <laughs> which is why Ali G fears her and you should see the links to NATO's armies and their celebrations of her power base further down the page okay St. Barbara it's on Wikipedia you'd better look it up quick St. <laughs> Barbara that's Greek okay and it's if you translate it into Greek it's bap bapa <laughs> yeah that's the bread and wine joke <laughs> Nicomedia Turkey or Heliopolis that's the helicopter and the police helicopters crashing through the roof of the Clutha pub where Billy Connolly got his cancer for because he used to drink there and all of the people that profit that from that pub crash in the false news sector are Levy and McRae's clients that's Levy and McRae the high priests of Israel subordinate only to Ali G's family that's the Baron Cohen's <laughs> high priests of Israel and they're married into the Rothschild bloodline but nobody's allowed to talk about that and when I do all of the investigative journalists start turning on each other that happens again and again and again okay there is no reference to her in the authentic authentic early Christian writings nor in the original recension of St. Jerome's martyrology look up the saints for a laugh and see what they do <laughs> yeah St. George is really interesting and the dragon is usually the penis or some sort of demonic threat from the rival religions <laughs> okay all of it written by Piso and explained to me for the last by me and my friends for the last six months okay uh, let's just keep going down to the highlights because my batteries Barbara the daughter of a rich pagan named Dioscorus so that's the Dionysius jokes was carefully guarded by her father who kept her locked up in a tower it, to preserve her from the outside world having secretly become a Christian she rejected an offer of marriage that she received through him I, did I tell you about my wife rejecting the advances of the Roman Catholic that she was at school with <laughs> the Quinlan family from Ireland that has loads of sectarian problems all the time because people tell lies <laughs> the Heidi myth so the tower is the Heidi myth and that is the Grimm brothers Aryan jokes again like the Pied Piper of Hamelin 
where people get led into diasporas out of their decent place where they live and own their own home and that is called the uh, NATO projects that have been run since 2000, the year 2000 by Tony Blair but his successor David Cameron is much more decent than that he only steals from his people he does not kill people as a war criminal in other people's countries in the name of morality and organized government which is the mafia yeah so he's not a war criminal which is why I keep saying he has the scope for greatness like the money lenders they are now backed into a corner because the people are capable of thinking and communicating with their brutalized neighbors everywhere thank you to all of the people in my town for talking openly about where you've come from and how things are in your own country in inverted commas okay when her father returned she acknowledged herself to be a Christian upon this he drew his sword to kill her but her prayers created an opening in the tower wall and she was miraculously transported to a mountain gorge like carry on up the Khyber <laughs> where two shepherds watched their flocks Dioscorus in pursuit of his daughter was rebuffed by the first shepherd I'm in the process of the law proceedings on my divorce of rebuffing things and I keep putting the war crimes in to embarrass <laughs> the team yet that is trying to silence the most potent fraud researcher on the globe and the war crimes are going to bring them down and really really quickly into a really really s serious place since I mentioned the Nuremberg word and complicity okay so so this was rebuffed by the first shepherd but the second betrayed her and was turned to stone and his flock changed to locusts that's a biblical law enforcement tool imposed by the one true God like the manna from heaven which is part of the Barclays jokes <laughs> yeah because that Barclays is a joke about barley and that's what manna is <laughs> isn't that funny okay the word Martian anus is used again and I've explained that in the Piso writing stories okay wow biblical uh, punishments <laughs> yeah and when I was courting my wife when she was still paying for the car that she did not own at all and she had no part of the ownership of my house yeah I worked in the uh, entomological sector which is the study of insects and we took a locust home and I don't remember how but it got into the the air air system the vents that are in the front of our Nissan car and almost all of the car names are a joke about the biblical writings torches that were used to burn her went out as soon as they came near her finally she was condemned to death by beheading her father himself carried out the death sentence however as punishment for this he was struck by lightning on the way home and his body was consumed by flame my best man was struck by lightning twice <laughs> and he was part of my persecution uh, in the legal criminal sector this year uh, and he talks to me openly on the streets <laughs> Barbara was buried by a Christian Val emptiness and her tomb became the site of miracles martyrdom was December the 4th in the reign of Emperor Maximin Anus and Prefect Marcian Field McConnell's sister is called Marcy and she's a real villain <laughs> in world history and persecutes even the politicians in America and coerces them and the killings of the innocents are like the pig killings in the stories published by P.G. Woodhouse all for a laugh <laughs> okay veneration edit there, the name of St. Barbara was known in Rome in the 7th century her cult can be traced to the 9th century at first in the east since there is no mention of her in the earlier martyrologies her historicity is considered doubtful <laughs> this was written in the uh, 2014 I believe her legend is included in Vincent's legends and speculum historial okay that's St Vincent terrible things that happened to him with a hot poker up his anus <laughs> yeah 
quite near the uh, the road west from where this Christian sailed into America. That's Christopher Columbus. Yeah, <laughs> Genoa. Yeah. Do you get it? The whole story is for profit. Saint Barbara is one of the fourteen holy helpers. Her association with the lightning that killed her father has caused her to be invoked against lightning and fire by association with explosions. She is also the patron of artillery and mining. <laughs> In 1969, because the accounts of her life and martyrdom were judged to be entirely fabulous, lacking clarity even about the place of her martyrdom, it was removed from that calendar but she's still mentioned in the Roman Martyrology, which in addition lists another ten martyred saints named Barbara, which is why Ali G told me about this dangerous cabal that have the same name as the Hollywood comics. That's the Hannah Barbara stories, and the Barbara that they were launched to cover was a massive killer, for real, in the American mafias. Barbero, isn't it funny? that people can twist world history like this entirely for profit and the easter eggs are selling nicely thank you <laughs> okay let's see if we can move slightly to the right because that's the santa claus jokes that we're getting into now and the moser and the friends of mrs thatcher yeah keeps the statistics twisted that's klaus moser santa klaus and jokes so that's statistics and authenticity of the facts, okay? Klaus Moser charges £30,000 per year for a secondary school education in his Jewish school that leads to people becoming elites in the artist and movie making sector. That's why it's so expensive, <laughs> yeah? Because all of the cover-ups win the Oscars and Oscar is the basis for the Klutha myths that's what the pub was that the Jewish loyal legal firms were able to profit from from a totally false news story okay oh, now we're into the Vladimir's <laughs> okay Christendom in Sarajevo which is the Christmas turkey jokes and the launch of World War I when the Archduke was killed by his elite friends in rival families there's the Heidi Tower. Yeah, look up Heidi and look up the similarity of the Aryan German myths that keeps taking the world to war and are derivatized from the uh, Norse myths, which comes into the Kivan story later on and all of the stories. I'm meeting now peop on people on the streets of our country from Denmark that can tell me about Viking history and confirms all of the involvement of all of these stories in the ancient North myths that's the Valkyrie stories the music of Wagner yeah and all of the stuff that keeps getting replayed into the modern day and age okay St Barbara and her tower French Villa Loup Aube polychromed limestone in 12th century the relics of St Barbara were brought from Constantinople to the St Michael's Golden Domed Monastery in Kiev for a laugh that's Kievan where the pagans lived until 800 <laughs> ok they love to have a laugh and that is the what are we going to do about Kev Kevin film that was made in Hollywood by the Jews that pay £30,000 to be educated by Klaus Moser and Melvin Bragg and they are friends in the Oxbridge colleges and at the BBC and he's the chief statistician <laughs> okay a small part oh crikey no to the St Michael's Gold Domed Monastery in Kiev where they were kept until the 1930s in the lead up to war when the Aryan myths were really useful when they were transferred to St Vladimir's <laughs> I'll explain that later but that is a joke about Vlad the Impaler the vampire keep them in fear story and the emirs that were on El Cid's side in Spain when they were being brutalized by the Moors and the emirs were decent enough to help Christianity out of its filmmaking crisis and to make friends with El Cid 
who then becomes Sid James in the Khyber Pass. <laughs> a small part of St. Barbara's relics were brought to the United Nations, the United States, by His Holiness Patriarch Filaret of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Kievan Patriarchate in November 2012. Okay, the Kievan Patriarchs are now part of the Christianity and Orthodox Church jokes. They were the pagans. They are permanently on display for veneration at St. Andrew faked up Ukrainian Orthodox Cathedral in Bloomingdale, Illinois. <laughs> Her feast day for Catholics, St. Barbara, Eastern Orthodox and Anglicans is December the 4th, which is very near the uh, Festival of Lights for the Jews, and we've explained how they keep twisting the dates so the story makes looks more authentic. There you have a picture of the Russian hammer icon, which is her icon, and that is actually a long shanks, <laughs> the long shanked dreidel or spinning top, which is wh what they do the winner takes it all gambling with in the festival of lights period near Christmas, but not necessarily on the 25th of December. <laughs> Barbara shrines in the German mines Schacht Conrad left and Schacht Ass. Yeah, the ass is the donkey, which is Jesus in the Christmas and Easter Palm Sunday stories. Yeah, and the palm thing is too vicious to talk about. Saint Barbara became the patron saint of artillery men. She is also traditionally the patron of armorers, military engineers, gunsmiths, miners, and anyone else who worked with cannon and explosives. Do you understand the cannon joke? Canonization is the process of creating a saint. So with cannon and explosives, she is invoked against thunder and lightning and all accidents arising from explosions of gunpowder. She is venerated by Catholics who face the danger of sudden and violent death in work. I've told you the stories about the priests. Yeah, and the people from Poland who tried to fix them, sat them upright when they'd had the cardiovascular stroke. Yeah, but she was just one of many innocent bystanders just trying to help out. Yeah, everything is a message from the gods, but not many of them see it coming. <laughs> and the horse's name was Tiptoe Away. St. <laughs> Barbara signified the powder magazine. Yeah, we're into the free press now and the face makeup stories and all of the fashion shows on the catwalk in Paris which are built on the martyrs' heads. Isn't it really funny when you can get away with murder and genocide and the people soak it all up and buy the Easter eggs which are the Rolling Stone joke on the resurrection on Monday or on Sunday depending on which <laughs> version of the magazine stories you now believed and everybody justifies all of the lies just by saying it was written that is also laughed at by the Monty Pythons in the stoning scenes and in the window scene you should watch them <laughs> no one can contest the illegitimacy of the story if you watch those videos and the Pythons completely understand it OK, St. Barbara's Day, December the 4th, is celebrated by the British Royal Artillery, RAF, which is Raphael, the, another of the six Jewish angels, Armourers Royal Engineers, Australian Royal Regiment of Australian Artillery. This is why Ali G knows that they are dangerous, because this is fucking NATO. St. Barbara runs it, and she's revered and <laughs> celebrated. Eh? every year in December near Christmas and near the Festival of Lights. The RAAF Armourers in Australia, Canadian Explosive Ordnance Disposal Technicians EOD, that's the charming woman who is called Celine Dionysius, that's the god Celine Dion is the name of the gods and she sings a joke about immortality with the Bee Gees which are the bee gods as mortals story retold again and again in the stories about the, the uh, Lord of the Rings written out of Oxford 
and the richest college of Oxford, which is Merton, where the Duchess of Sutherland sent the people in the colonies to the colonies. So the other people that worship St. Barbara, the really dangerous woman, are the Canadian Air Force armourers that were involved in the 9-11 scandal and the launch of Mike Tyndall into the cover-ups for the Tyndall Air Base, the Royal Canadian Artillery, Canadian Military Field Engineers, Royal Canadian Navy Weapons Engineering Technicians, New Zealand RNZAF Armourers, RNZA, RNZN, Gunners Branch, Armed Forces, and Gunner was the nickname of my best man, and he was really badly burnt in World War II, and everybody thinks that the unjustified war is really funny, and the persecuting of the investigators of that is really, really sad when you picked your best man for his meekness and honesty. Additionally, it is celebrated by Irish Defence Forces, Artillery Regiments, Norwegian Armed Forces, Artillery Battalion, United States Army and Marine Corps Field and Air Defence Artillery, many Marine Corps Explosive Ordnance Disposal Technicians and other artillery formations. That is the landmine story that Princess Diana died for and even her name, the die bit, is the Dionysius joke and the links to the naming of the Nesset, which is a bit more complicated but ties in Ken Dodd and the Die Demen. <laughs> the units and subunits celebrate the day with church parades, sport days, guest nights, cocktail parties, dinners and other activities. Several mining institutions also celebrate it, such as some branches of the Australian Institute of Mining and Meteorology. The West Australian Mining Club celebrates St Barbara's Day and use it to remember those people who have died working in the mining industry during the year. That takes us into the Nobel Prize joke. The Nobel people were munitions manufacturers, yet they made things that were explosives, like the nitrates, the gelatine, the, the nitrogelatine bombs were made by the Nobels and those are volatile chemicals and when na really nasty people inhale them they get cardiovascular accidents but when the innocents who work in those factories inhale them God looks after them because they're innocents <laughs> yeah and not many people realize that eh? which is why they don't see it coming when they have their cardiovascular accident or they get their heart rhythm disturbance even on the sports field yeah, like many of my colleagues from Aylesbury Rugby Club and the man Wood who commentates on the rugby from Ireland, the sectarian place, his dad died suddenly with cardiac arrest because of his iron channel defects that I totally understand. His death was nothing to do with the nitrites and went beyond that joke when they have their cardiovascular accidents and they get breathless as they walk up the Calvary Hill <laughs> Yeah, they then have to use the same nitrates to get their heart rhythm back and all of that has now been privatised and those are generic drugs so they will launch something new and equally ineffective for that very very soon <laughs> ok I do not want to speculate on that because the doctors try to section me every time I tell the truth about the snake wrapping around that stick on the cross with the legs akimbo <laughs> ok Although they do not celebrate her Saints Day, she is also the patron saint of the US Navy and Marine Corps Aviation Ordnance Men. Santa Barbara Night is celebrated by the Norwich University where they launched the Global Warming Investigations. Do you now see how comprehensive the theft project is? That's Norwich University who now want us all to attend massive summits if we're a politician at the people's expense and when we start taxing people for it it's only the poor people that's like the VAT scams that Norman Lamont and his colleagues launched years ago <laughs> independent battery in Greece the day is celebrated by the artillery corps of the Greek army and the Cypriot National Guard all of the Greek gods think that this is really evil <laughs> 
and the links to their elements and the dissociation of that and the turning around of all of the stories about the weather patterns human behaviours and its links to false religions is really twisted but I'm not going to have time to that until I get on to the killing of the pagan stories okay <laughs> this one's I need to get this one in because it ties into other stories I've told you about the links to the Jewish profiteers. Santa Barbara night is celebrated by the Norwich University Independent Battery. In Greece the date is celebrated by the Artillery Corps of the Greek Army and the Cypriot National Guard. That's where the bank machines were crashed. Cyprus. Yeah, and the people that paid for that were the innocent savers that used the Cypriot banks but they were not the culprits. The culprits are always the Rothschilds and their slave masters who get culled in all of their wars. Artillery camps throughout the two countries host celebrations in honour of the saint where the traditional suite of Luku Mades is, Luku Maids is, uh, offered to soldiers and visitors allegedly because it resembles cannonballs. There they are, just like the lat cakes that we celebrate in the Festival of Lights, which is about oil wealth and stealing it from other people's countries. That's the oily products that I talked about when we talked about the Jewish angels and the Jewish festivals that interlock entirely with every Christianity story you've ever heard. But they're really cheap in Sainsbury's supermarket, and if you're really lucky, you can get half a dozen of them for 30 pence. Some of them have custard inside it. I'm not aware of any links of custard to religion. <laughs> but the oil link to the brutalization of the Holy Lands forever is something that even the stupid people that watch the sport cannot miss. And why the prices are so high at the forecourt. Totally concurrent with the launch of the Cold War as soon as World War II was over for profit. Okay, so they resemble cannonballs, the creation of saints and the brutalization of other people's countries. St. Barbara is also the patron saint of northern Greek, Greek city of drama. Do you get that? That's the melodramas in the news that tell us about the beheading of people that were trained in the same places as George W. Bush, MI6, the CIA and the FBI. Yeah, and Gordon Brown and tell us that they're going to crack down on serious fraud, the FBI, and that they've got a gagging order on the Prime Minister and stuff like that. Gordon will not talk about the surrogate factors that keeps the world enslaved and all of the people in innocent places threatened with violence and tank commanders and heavily armed heliocopters. <laughs> COP is the Crown Prosecution Service up here and I'm at war with them and thank you to the decent citizens of Jedburgh who realise that I'm a decent citizen and that all I'm trying to do is to save the local jobs and the, <laughs> the closure of the local courts because of the cover-ups for everything I do is an absolute scandal. The Spanish military artillerymen, mining engineers and miners also venerate her as patron saint. That's Spain. <laughs> yeah, where the king comes from and has abdicated recently and kills the rare species and his own brother so he can become the king. That's Juan Carlos who sired Princess Diana's children, one of them. The city of Santa Barbara, California, located approximately 100 miles northwest of Los Angeles, is named for the mission of Santa Barbara. And guess what I was looking for when I found it? Monterey revealed for us where it all started in the Devil's Advocate movie by Al Pacino, who also plays the Godfather and the Mafia leader for a laugh, like the Pope now does with the horrible link, limp. And he's part of those caravan jokes that I referred you to, which got the local Jordi, his, the joker Jordi, his horrible leukemia. Yeah, because they laugh at all of the geopolitical scams in every one of the news outlets and the media events, <laughs> all owned by the world owners, the Rothschilds, indirectly. 
Other Spanish and Portuguese settlements named Santa Barbara were established in Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Honduras, Mexico, Venezuela and the Philippines. And I just talked to a man from Glesky this week, a really decent ordinary working man who's worked in Mexico and told me about the hor horrible killings of the Mexicans at border control which has been going on for centuries already. Okay, The Spanish totally owned the west coast of America before the Gentiles took over and they began to sweep into the power base that is the presidency which is the Freemasonic hub in the White House and the other chamber there. Many churches in Russia are dedicated in her name, including one in Moscow next to St. Basil's Cathedral. Yeah, that's the central bank joke again that John Cleese is allowed to laugh at as a tax exile in either America or Canada, depending on where his travel tickets with all the allowances that they get take him to that year. John Cleese made a speech in the f under the heel of Italy about the joke about the uh, the killing of the returning troops which is why it's the pythons laugh at everything that happens and why the pythons are involved with the apostles from Cambridge in all of the lead up to all wars and the sleazy little stories that they make to cover it up when you see the laughs in their movies it is the uncontestable truth that they understand all of these frauds uh, and the defrauding of every one of the innocent worshippers so in Georgia, where the Armenian Genocide took place, St. Barbara's Day is celebrated as Bardaroba on December 17th, which is December 4th in the old style calendar. And this is where the Tardis and the Daleks that look exactly like the Bank of International Settlements come in. The traditional festival food is Lobiani. Lob is the wormwood joke. It's a worm. <laughs> Bread baked and the worm is very often the dragon joke, if the dragon joke is not the penis wrapped around the stick waiting to become erect <laughs> or is at the head of Nelson's column. Everything they do is a joke against the people and this one's vicious because the traditional festive food is lobiana, bread baked with a bean stuffing. That's the Mr. Bean Armenian genocide slaughtering the Anzacs at Gallipoli joke. Mr. Bean was the war correspondent for Gallipoli. In Macedonia, St. Barbara's Day is celebrated as Varvara on 17th December. Some Macedonians celebrate with their closest family and friends at home, while others refrain, believing the people who step in their house on St. Barbara's Day will give them either good or bad luck. And you should see how that comes into all the inexact Norse myths. <laughs> Yeah, because the story's been derivatized so many times when it gets to Northern Europe that all of it is a grossly offensive gesture against the true gods who I totally understand are mortified by everything that the humans laugh at, which is a joke at their expense, like the Culloden story and the, uh, the Flodden story that I told the visitor from Denmark yesterday. In the mining town of Kalgoorlie, Australia, as patron saint of miners, St. Barbara is venerated on the annual St. Barbara's Day Parade. Yeah, so this woman never existed like any of the religious icons that she preaches for, but the money stream that they get through the Vatican, through the Church of England and Justin Welby's portals are massive. In the Irish army, she is venerated as the patron saint of the artillery corps which is why I've coloured that in green for the simple people and appears in core insignia half dressed with her legs akimbo holding a harp sitting on a field cannon yeah can you guess what the cannon and it's <laughs> yeah it's erect structure being very hard <laughs> yeah and she's got her legs akimbo around the can cannon in the Czech Republic, a statue of St. Barbara is placed near the future tunnel portal during the groundbreaking ceremony of most major tunnelling projects, which is why they think that the Great Escape movie is ever so funny, and why the man that was the original Steve McQueen died in his 40s, with gut jokes about guns and munitions and explosives in the last of the YouTube videos that he made. <laughs> yeah? And 
you might have noticed that he gets barbed wire stuck in his every limb as he rides his motorbike around <laughs> on the places near Autobahn 999 where Hitler used to live. <laughs> right. Can't be much more to go. The, uh, and there's the medallions. Uh, there's the cannon and the pyramidal shaped pile of <laughs> bullets that they launch. Yeah. The Order of Saint Medallion. That Saint Barbara Medallion with the Holy Trinity in the middle of it for a vicious laugh at the worshippers but the elites who can speak Latin and Greek understand it for all of those 2,115 years <laughs> yeah it is just amazing okay the United States Army Field Artil Artillery Association and the United States Army Air Defense Artillery Association maintaining the Order of St. Barbara as an honorary military society in the United States Army Field Artillery <laughs> and the United States Army Air Defense Artillery members of both the United States Army and United States Marine Corps along with their military and civilian supporters are eligible for membership there are two levels the Honorable Order St. Barbara a silver medal <laughs> and this might be famil familiar to you in an Olympian context with red ribbons entirely supporting them and funding them yeah, is granted for long-term distinguished service in the field artillery or air defense artillery. The other award is the Ancient Order of St. Barbara, a gold-colored medallion with red ribbons supporting it entirely <laughs> Yeah, from the poor people's stance. Those who are selected for this honor have achieved long-term exceptional service to the field artillery, surpassing even their brethren. Yeah. That's in other people's countries. That's the Homeland Security NATO projects that are still ongoing, which is why I keep banging on about David Cameron's capacity to step down or to step backwards and away from war that has blighted our world for all of its history. He can be great if he just picks up the phone and gives me a call. Yeah, I know we are shielded. Yeah, and I know that he has the capacity for decency and the people that are the modern day Rothschilds yeah they also have the capacity for decency at the end of the film about the Rothschild dynasty they're only fearful about how the Gentiles will react yeah all of this is history now and what they do now are only massive financial crimes but the armies still being in other people's countries are funded by only one source which is why I want to talk to them all and I'm keen to talk to the Harris family that live right next door and shield their every activity because they're now aware of what the horse's name and what its fate was uh, and they are capable of talking to decent people about the horrible history that is our world okay so this is Easter Saturday there's a lot more to tell and it is really really sad that everybody gets persecuted for refusing to be part of this fraud okay Santa Barbara's Day or idol 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 or idol Barbura is celebrated in Lebanon Syria Jordan Palestine Israel and among Arab Christians annually on December the 4th that's like the man who plays bridge Omar Sharif with Dr. Jones, who I used to work for and gave my wife a reference as she entered the Otago Polytechnic crime scene with the head of HR on the board at Ernst & Young. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Everything's coming out. Everybody I know who has turned against me and has deserted their country, you're going to be named and shamed. St. Barbara is mentioned in fact... Fa uh, oh, this is the artist sector. According to this drama, a popular Spanish phrase regarding this saint in the early 20th century was, Blessed Saint Barbara, your story is written in the sky with paper and holy water. That's the piss on roads, rain, rainstorms. Yeah, and all they do is laugh at it. Uh, and they then pretend that the massive weather storms that we get are entirely attributable 
to the green and global warming story written by Norwich University <laughs> where some of my friends have gone but they are relatively decent to me and they are just innocent bystanders yeah but their funding for decent research has gone down into the red zone yeah right in the middle of the conflict zone because nothing is fundable now in decent activities the criminals and the mafias take it all and that is the central banks that the Rothschilds own in every country across the globe it's reputational hazard for them now because the culprits now number so few and the victims they're almost seven 